Refereeing standards and VAR once again in the mud following Liverpool and Manchester City's 1-1 draw at Anfield yesterday. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Yesterday's video is going to centre around this challenge right here. Jeremy Doku's challenge on Alexis McAllister in the dying embers of Liverpool and Manchester City's 1-1 draw yesterday at Anfield in what was a huge and major title contenders match. It was built up as this real clash of two title contenders as the run into the season really does kick on from this point forward. Liverpool, of course, went into the game second in the table following Arsenal's win against Brentford on Saturday night. And Manchester City went into it third. And they knew that a win would see Liverpool go back to the top of the table. A win for City would see them go to the top of the table. Whilst a draw would see Arsenal maintain their position at the top of the table. As it was, it finished 1-1 in what was a hugely exciting game. A game full of intensity and a perfect example of what Premier League football at its highest standards should be about and what it necessarily is uh, and has been for the most part of the past several years that these two teams have been at the peak of the Premier League powers that be. But rather than talk about what was an exciting game, well, rather than talk about what was an intriguing game and what obviously may become of the title race and everything, instead, what we are left with is the horrible, bitter taste, once again, of V-A-R. The three worst letters in the footballing alphabet and dictionary. V-A-R has once again overshadowed what was a perfectly great game yesterday, what was an intense game, what was a game full of high quality um, and, and just overall excitement. The atmosphere and everything was just perfect yesterday for, for the game. And yet, here we are talking about the standards of refereeing, the usage of VAR and how poor it is once again and adding another example of bad VAR usage and poor refereeing standards to the list that has been growing ever so long this season. Longer than ever before, in my opinion. And again, it's 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 just overshadowed and stolen the spotlight over what should have been a great game that we should be talking about right now. We should be talking about how good Liverpool were. We should be talking about how poor City were from time to time. We should be talking about how... Liverpool's depleted squad continues to defy expectation. We should be talking about the title race. Should, should we be talking about Arsenal? Should we talk about all these factors? But instead, we're here talking about VAR, referees, and this obviously very controversial moment that could play a massive part in the title race to come over the next 10 games or so of the season. We're going to be talking about all of that. We're going to be talking about the, the game the moment, the aftermath, the reaction, everything else in between. But before we go any further, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both things are always and forever greatly appreciated. And of course, get involved in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, about the moment, about the controversy. Was it a penalty? Was it not a penalty in your opinion? All of that good stuff will make for a great and interesting reading, I'm sure, down below. So please do get involved down there. But without further ado, let's get on with the video. Let's talk about this controversial moment. Let's talk about the game. I'm going to talk about the game first and foremost, actually. Let's get the positive out of the way. Yesterday was an incredible game, in my opinion. Perfect example of what Premier League football is all about. Two teams that were intense, battled it out. Potentially for the final time, obviously, between Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola, with Jurgen Klopp leaving at the end of the season. Um, it could be the, for the final time that these two teams meet. It definitely is going to be the final time that these two teams meet in a Premier League capacity. But maybe in the FA Cup, perhaps. Maybe there could be... Um, a game between these two that's set to play out there later on down the line. I thought the game was was brilliant. I thought Liverpool just about shaded the first half, despite the fact that they went in a goal down. John Stones with a cleverly worked uh, corner kick, scoring the opening goal of the game, breaking the deadlock after Kevin De Bruyne's clever corner. Um, I have no issue with the supposed controversy surrounding, uh, I think it was Nathan Ake blocking McAllister from making a run towards the ball. Um, I got no problem with that whatsoever. I thought it was clever from them. I thought it was a poor lapse in concentration from the Liverpool defence. Um, I got no problem with the City goal whatsoever. So getting that out there, there first and foremost. McAllister equalises in the second half um, from a spot kick after Darwin Nunes is cleaned out by Edison. 
And Liverpool dominate the game, whether it was the response to the goal or whether it was after equalising. Liverpool dominated the game. They had a few good opportunities for the likes of Luis Diaz in particular. He didn't take them. And that is really where I want to caveat this whole VAR thing. The VAR thing is not necessarily why we lost the game yesterday. It's obviously a big moment and it's obviously a bit of an injustice. But at the same time, I said in my match reaction, we shouldn't focus solely on that. That's not the sole reason why we didn't get the three points yesterday. It's part of the reason, maybe, but it's not the sole reason. Part of the reason was also the fact that we missed so many good opportunities yesterday and we didn't put City to the sword when they were most vulnerable. And that's that's on us. Not having that killer instinct up front uh, ended up killing us in the end a little bit. Um, of course, the penalty would have been nice to have, to, have, to have happened and the penalty would have actually been um, justified as well, given the manner of which the foul was was happening and everything. But, yeah, it, it is... The, the mistakes, the missed chances, they happen. They happen. I, I 100% get that. But it's not obviously why what we're here to talk about as of right now. We talked about it yesterday in the post-match reaction. I said that it was a big reason as to why Liverpool didn't win. But of course, the VAR stuff has obviously overshadowed everything. So that's why we're talking about it. The refereeing yesterday was poor as well. A couple of times in the first half, Kyle Walker should have got booked. First one I can understand, maybe you give him a bit of a warning to calm down. But the second time, should have been a definite yellow card. He fouled Sobberstein twice in the opening, I want to say 20-25 minutes of the game. And he didn't get a yellow card for it. Kyle Walker was terrible yesterday. That is the worst game I think I've ever seen Kyle Walker play. He was absolutely appalling yesterday. The referee did not give a yellow card to him for that. It was poor. From the referee standards. And I hate this. I hate this whole we're playing the occasion thing. The referees are playing the occasion. I know it's a big game. I know Sky have built it up as this huge title contenders match. And it is. But at the same time. If a player's got to be yellow carded. He's got to be yellow carded. Kyle Walker not getting yellow carded in the first half was a joke. Because it changes the game then. It means he can't. It means he has to defend differently. It means that Luis Diaz is probably going to just. I know that he had the, him on toast the entirety of the game. But it means that he could have more. He probably could have took him on more. It means that we probably could have shifted our game plan slightly to maybe to try and tempt Walker into giving away another foul and then maybe another yellow card. But he was poor yesterday. There was obviously... There was a couple of other 50-50 moments that were a bit weird as well from the referee. I don't think the referee was that good. But this moment at the end really took the cake in terms of just how sums up how poor the refereeing and VAR standards if you haven't guessed already and I said it yesterday in my opinion it is a penalty and I'm not just saying that because I'm a Liverpool fan I've been on this crusade of calling out VAR and trying to be as consistent as possible when it comes out to calling out poor refereeing standards and calling out poor usage of VAR I've called out many a time when Liverpool have been uh, the victims of this and obviously if Liverpool have actually benefited from it I've called it out as well um, I called it out for what, Man United as well so rivals I've called it out for City Arsenal definitely Newcastle from time to time Wolves definitely have been hurt by it and I know I've definitely mentioned Wolves once or twice in videos and live streams in the past so I've tried to be as consistent as possible with, with calling out this but for me this is inexcusable. This is a penalty all day long. It's a stonewall penalty. And you know it's a stonewall penalty when the likes of Mike Dean, of all people, are saying it probably will be a penalty. And then is a bit surprised when the referee is not even advised to go to the monitor to double check it. VAR have simply ruled it out as ha it being no penalty whatsoever it was a very strange decision and not only did Mike Dean agree but Gary Neville also agreed he called out Jeremy Doku for being extremely lucky um he said that the city have been very fortunate there to have not been to have not conceded a penalty um so if those two are calling it out you kind of know it's probably going to be a penalty if you haven't seen it I'll kind of run through it a little bit it's a corner in the last in the dying embers of the game City failed to clear it. The ball is up in the air at an awkward angle. Jeremy Docker goes to 
control it, I think, with his foot or blast it away on one of the two or, or whatever. He goes to control it with his foot. It's a, a, sort of a, at an awkward angle. Um, high foot. McAllister goes to challenge him for the ball. Doku just about gets there just before McAllister does, but the follow-through gets McAllister on the chest. Studs on his chest. That is not seen as dangerous. That is not seen as reckless. That is not seen as a penalty. Now, I'm not calling for a red card or anything on this. I was just calling for a penalty, and I would have been satisfied with that. And I'm not calling out City for being cheats. I'm not saying there's a conspiracy theory here for City to win the title or anything like that. And this is purely refereeing and VAR incompetence, in my honest opinion. But what I am going to say is that the referee and VAR absolutely bottled this moment. And it goes back to what I said earlier. You don't play the occasion. You play to the letter of the law. You play the game properly. Just because this was seen as a massive title contenders clash and this moment may have may have determined the Premier League title. It may be a big talking point when we come back in hindsight at the end of the season to... Um, the irony being is that if it was or wasn't given, this could still be a big moment in the title race regardless. So the referees just simply bottled it. The referee has simply panicked... Or the VAR officials have simply panicked and gone. We can't really, uh, we, we can't really have this to be decided by a penalty decision. Surely, even though Liverpool had one earlier in the game, this surely can't be the way to decide this particular game, or even overall, maybe the title picture itself. They've absolutely bottled it, in my opinion. They've let the pressure of the game dictate, and maybe it goes back to what I said earlier on in the season about how. This is just turning into a, a, a disappointing and terrible reality show. Maybe VAR, I, I said earlier on in the season, is, is turning into a reality show. Because once again, we are talking about it. Once again, we are talking about this huge moment. Rather than the football itself. We're talking about the drama element of it. And Sky have built up this whole free horse title race thing between Liverpool, Arsenal, Manchester City... And they just want to continue it. And they want to intensify and fuel that fire. Maybe that is the case here. Maybe that's why they bottled it. Because there's no way you can tell me that with the magnitude of the game, with the way that he's gone in for the ball, the way that he's challenged for the ball, that that is not a Stonewall penalty. He's gone for the ball. And the VAR have said, uh, they've come out and they've gone... Well, the reason why is because he's got the ball first. Two things are wrong with that sentence. Number one, he may get the ball first, but it's the follow-through. If this happens anywhere else on the pitch, and Jurgen Klopp said this himself in his post-match interview, by the way. If this happens anywhere else on the pitch, it's a foul. And at the very least, it's a yellow card. I've seen these be given for red cards. At the very least, it's a yellow card and a foul. So why is it that we constantly have this, and Jamie Carragher said this as well, we have this unwritten rule where anywhere else on the pitch, foul. But for some reason in the penalty area, we have to up the ante a little bit. We have to up the threshold a, a little bit. Why? A foul is a foul. Regardless of where it is, it's a foul. The same way that a yellow card is a yellow card. No matter whether it happens in the first minute or the 90th minute. It's a yellow card if it is justified and warranted. Why is this not a foul? And second of all, getting the ball first and then the player second does not justify it not being a foul. Case in point. Exhibit A, Your Honour. Curtis Jones against Tottenham. Exhibit B. Christian Romero against Chelsea. Exhibit C, Casemiro a couple of times last season. Exhibit D, Gusto earlier this season. I want to say it was against Wolves, but I'm not 100% confident. But I want to say it was against Wolves, the red card against Wolves. There are probably other prime examples as well of players that have gone in for challenges, got the ball first, and then got the man. And every single time it has been a foul, every single time it has been a red card. 
at the very least, this deserved to be a card. Yellow, red, not bothered. This would have been a penalty. This would have been Liverpool's golden opportunity to win the game right at the death and make a big statement in the title race. And the referees have bottled it from making that happen. Don't get me wrong. Liverpool missed opportunities. And Liverpool need to look at themselves as much as what the referees and VAR need, need to look at each other. I don't... I 100% agree with that. But that shouldn't be just cast over just because the referees and VAR... Uh, just because Liverpool didn't do their job in sticking the ball in the back of the net. This can't be glossed over. Like what seemingly the mainstream media are doing. Sky were very quick to seemingly go, yeah, I didn't think it was a penalty. It's 50-50. It's one of them that wasn't given. Anyway, let's look at the pretty title race we've got going on right now. Let's look at Liverpool. Let's look at the Man City's remaining fixtures. Let's look at Arsenal, who are top of the table right now. Let's just forget all that. Let's just look at the title race. It doesn't work like that. Once again... VAR and the poor standard of refereeing have another bad example against them. And once again, they have overshadowed what was a brilliant game of football yesterday. One of the best games of football that I, I've seen. It was an intense game. I loved every second of it, even though it was nervy, obviously, with me having uh, me having a, a say in, in the game, with obviously it being my team and everything. But at the same time, so frustrating that once again, we are subject to incompetent referees yet again. And I guarantee you this as well. Whether it be tonight in the Chelsea-Newcastle game, whether it be in a few days' time when the FA Cup matches kick off, or whether it be simply straight after the international break, or even during the international break, you will see this challenge happen once again very, very soon. And I guarantee you, it will be a foul. It will be some sort of card for the uh, for the guilty party. And hit, and we'll open the can of worms again and talk about the incompetence, the inconsistency, and we'll all ask the question: Well, why was that given as a foul and this one wasn't? It's obvious. It's clear and obvious. Clear and obvious, like this foul right here. But again. We are officiated by the worst set of referees and by the worst set of eyes in this business. But what can we do other than call it out constantly? What can we do other than call it out? I'm still baffled by it. I'm still confused by it. I still don't understand how this wasn't given yesterday. But nothing we can do. We just got to move on, haven't we? Because that's what they all want us to do. This is why I keep saying people, got to call it out. Got to call it out when we see it, regardless of the team, regardless of your rivalries, your personal agendas. We've got to call it out when we see it. And this was dreadful yesterday. Anyway, those are just my thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of this moment yesterday between Jeremy Docker and Alexis McAllister? What do you make of the game yesterday? What do you make of the refereeing performance, the performance from Man City, Liverpool, etc., etc.? I would love to know your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it in regards to this moment right here uh, in the comment section down below. So let me know what you guys think and feel. Otherwise, hit the like button on the way. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new and want to see more content like this. Both things are always and forever greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fetch. This has been another Fetch Talks video. And I'll see you speak to you all again soon in another video or live stream or whatever it may be. Cheers, guys. Thanks everyone for watching. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Speak to you all again very, very soon.